Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst Dave Vellante. Dave, data monetization has been the topic du jour. Yeah, and we're way off the ski lift. <laughs> Halfway down the trail. <laughs> Keep We're him with the snowflake the motif. Yeah. Yes, exactly, <laughs> indeed. Indeed, well that's a great way to introduce our next two guests. We have Mike Palmer, he is the CEO of Sigma. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE, a many times over CUBE alum. An absolute pleasure. <laughs> and Brad Falk, he's pr principal architect at Prism HR. Thank you so much, great Brad. Great to be here, yeah. thank you, thank you. So I want to start out with both of you. Mike, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about, about Sigma and what you do. Sigma takes advantage of all of the, I think, promise and opportunity that Snowflake brings to customers that are you know, coming here, for example, to the summit. We're in a world where data went from, frankly, very small data to hundreds of billions of records, where you could have access to one or two applications to now having access to all the data and application. How do we provide what I like to refer to as the average person, the freedom uh, to access that data, to ask unique questions, uh, to do that with the skills they already bring to the table, they don't want to learn new technologies, uh, which ultimately, by the way, is a spreadsheet, which is the most universally known technology. And then ultimately, how do we build workflows on all of that? So we're trying to kind of bring the whole uh, analysis to forecast to actions together in one platform. You're talking about average people, you're talking my language. Brad, we're how about all, you? We are all average people. <laughs> Tana, <laughs> right. Tell us a little bit about Prism HR. Yeah, so Prism HR uh, is a software platform for uh, payroll, benefits, um, HR, uh, we service you know, hundreds of uh, payroll service providers um, that encompasses 80,000 plus small to medium businesses. We're looking at, you know, two plus million employees. Um, and we uh, generate a little over $100 billion uh, in payroll annually, so. So just payroll, just focused on payroll or other services? Payroll and well? benefits, uh, workers' so, comp. So healthcare and the yeah, like? Yeah, so. Our customers are people that are basically, you know, providing HR outsourcing to small and medium businesses, right? right? You know, uh, Joe's tire shop that doesn't want to do, you know, their own payroll and benefits and all that kind of stuff. Our customers service them. All right, got it. So the second, this is the second uh, company. I want you to give me a call. We got, we should talk. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've Dave's been, doing a lot of business here today. Yeah, but the other way. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. He's the customer. Yeah, yeah so, no, indeed, indeed. Yeah. So Mike, tell us a little bit about the, the Snowflake partnership with Sigma. So as I said before, we are looking to bring forward everything that Snowflake makes available in the core platform and make that relevant to an end user. So some of the things that uh, we announced today alongside Snowflake, and by the way, Snowflake reciprocating, announcing that we're the BI partner of the year again this year. Uh, because again, we take advantage of a lot of the features they're, they're uh, investing in. So for example, if we're going to lean into a predictive analytics in products like Cortex, that's only relevant if the average person is able to consume those algorithms and make them relevant in their line of business or in their industry. So Sigma does a great job connecting Cortex, for example, to a table where I can get output from one of those algorithms, where I can think about you know, what my marketing conversion rates are going to be or what my inventory forecasting is going to be. Uh, of course, we do this on the same core values, operating at huge scale. We never move data out of the warehouse, so we're part of, I think, a long-term evolution of better security, better governance, uh, moving away from legacy practices like extracting data to end users so they can finally use it. Uh, I think that level of partner integration with a real thought to data democratization and what the world's going to look like uh, make us just natural partners. So Brad, how specifically do you take advantage of, of Sigma? Well, there's quite a few areas. So we, we've actually, uh, th this is our sort of second uh, go round with modernizing our data platform, right? So some of the things that really attracted us to Sigma was their embedded uh, analytics feature. So this gives us an opportunity to sort of, you know, let the experts handle the hard stuff and we can just build, you know, our business around that, right? And then offer that to our customers to then, you know, uh, build whatever they need to build, instead of us always having to, you know, go through the custom development process, get get uh, you know requirements from customers, get tweaks, give that back to them. We're able to now um, provide self-service reporting for our customers in in an embedded experience that 
you know, matches the rest of our application. Was your first attempt at, at modernization an attempt to build instead of buy? Or? Well, it was, really wasn't even that. It was, um, it, it was more along the lines of uh, just not the right technology mix, you know, for what we were trying to do. So uh, we had a different BI vendor and a different, basically, data uh, set of data stores that we were working with. And no matter how you know, we sort of triangulated the problem of either fast queries or fast ETL times, things like that, we can never really get the mix quite right. So that's really where Snowflake and Sigma came into play. You know, these two implementations sort of changed the game for us uh, as far as being able to actually deliver on the promise of that modern data platform. In fact, I think you're rolling that out at a conference just this week. We are, we absolutely are, yeah, so. Tell us more. Yeah, so we've been in, uh, so we, we basically started our engagement with uh, Sigma around, around this time of last year. And by the end of the year, we had uh, basically an MVP and a beta. We rolled that beta out to all of our customers that wanted to you know, try out what we, were, what we were building. And at this point, our user conference is going on at the same time as, as the Snowflake Summit. Um, and we are announcing that we're going fully uh, GA with this new data platform and the new analytics uh, offering. Um, on July 1st, so we're really, really excited about that. It's so I want to go back to you, Mike, and, 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 those, and those average people in terms of how they are using what you're selling to determine, well, I can, I can make some money off of this. How do you determine what these data monetization opportunities are? Particularly, because I'm picturing you having these focus groups full of average people of how, <laughs> how can they? I guess, you know, <laughs> the definition of average is a little bit flexible, <laughs> but, uh, well, Let's start with the fact that every company has data that another company does not. You know, and if you think uh, in the context, for example, of a financial services company that are trying to make fast investment decisions on the best quality data they possibly can, inevitably, if you were to be able to integrate another company's data, you would have a better perspective. Uh, you'd probably have a greater level of granularity. So the question is, how do I, how do I extend the value of my data? How do I integrate the value of yours? So for example, uh, as Prism HR is doing, a, they want to externalize it, right? They, they don't want BI, or so to speak, to be within the four walls. Um, secondly, they want the opportunity to ingest. So how do I get, uh, how do I get a third party's data into my data so it's better for both of us? And then obviously, how do we manipulate that data? So we needed infrastructure change. You know, we needed to be on the cloud. We needed to be on products like Snowflake that gave you that kind of flexibility. We needed products like Sigma because Sigma is the front end, it's the UI to Snowflake. So this is how, uh, whether ingest or the ability to manipulate that data becomes possible. But ultimately for us, a lot of that is showing up because common skill sets. Uh, the question that I ask everybody, 100% hit rate on this, is do you have a spreadsheet on your laptop? Turns out, 100% of You've people- You've asked me that question before. <laughs> and I, and I you still do. do. Yeah, and you still do, because we all do. Multiples. That's right. <laughs> a billion people globally, more than a billion people globally have licenses for spreadsheets. We take everything from building our lists to how we communicate our sports teams, uh, you know, who's carpooling today, all the way up to how we're running our finance organizations and inventory management. We did the, the magical thing of taking that skill that everybody has and just applying it to just a massive back end of data. Uh, inside a company and now between companies. All right, great. Yeah, and, and our users too, it's the same type of thing. We have a, a really wide range of skill sets within our user base, right? So we can package up a lot of you know, reports that, you know, and dashboards that we deliver out of the box. Our users you know, can just use them how they are. They can customize those to whatever they need. They can build whatever they need from scratch and then they can package that up as an offering to sell to their customers, right? And their customers are going to be just the very basic user. They want, you know, just give me something that can give me the data that I need without having to be even a spreadsheet expert, right? And so we, now we have that flexibility to, you know, uh, have the multiple levels uh, of user skill sets and, and everybody gets what they need. So your customer s sees what? They see your UI? Your they see our UI, and, and that was kind of the, really the big benefit. You know, we can create this UI that matches our other, uh, you know, applications in our family, the UX standards that our design team has set out. You know, so when they come to what we call Report Center, this is what we're, what we're releasing, 
it's, it feels like the rest of the, the ecosystem, right? And then they go into a, 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 a workbook or a dashboard, and now they're in the Sigma experience, but it's still within the realm of what, they, what they're used to seeing. Okay, and then, and then when you, so Sigma's at the back end, yeah. underneath that there's Snowflake, right. so you're using credits to sort of, to pay for all this, how does that all work? Yeah, yeah, we're using credits, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, you use Snowflake credits, obviously, for the workload generated right. in Snowflake, and right. we, we're a subscription model, so you right. pay per user. Okay, so that's simple. Yeah. Okay, so... so and, and that's another way we can really target the different user types with the different license types that, that Sigma offers. So we can, uh, you know, sit, sort of get a nice fine-grained set of license types that matches all these different personas. So, our customers don't have to pay for, you know, everybody doesn't have to be a, a power user. We can say, okay, you get these set of power user licenses and these set of um, explorer licenses and these set of, you know, just plain viewers. And, you know, that it mixes and matches really well. And you guys are playing with all these new Snowflake toys. You get them early. Yep. So what's the experience been? What, what's, anything excite you and how will that change? your ability to deliver value? Well, there's a lot that excites us. I think, first of all, uh, some of the newer innovations include just different deployment models. You know, we have customers that want to buy in a cloud-based format, but now with native apps, you have the ability to keep all of the application within the Snowflake environment, not have to go back to their security and governance teams, for example, and get approvals for different, uh, to different access methods, makes it a lot easier, to, in particular, to get into large enterprise customers. Uh, so deployment models are a big innovation uh, inside of Snowflake. AI is obviously, uh, if you haven't missed it or haven't seen it, you know it is the, the theme of the conference, but the idea of uh, how do we think about a, not just what I can do with AI today, but maybe more importantly is, what am I, am I setting myself up to build infrastructure so I can adopt AI consistently over the long term? We talk about AI's value is really just the tip of the iceberg today. There are going to be many more use cases. We're on, a, we're on more than a marathon here. So we need to build infrastructure, access methods, testing procedures, all the things that make software work. Those things are also necessary to make AI work in the long term. So we're excited about all of the uh, LLMs. We're excited about Cortex. Uh, there's a lot to like about what we're hearing from Snowflake now. So, well, since you brought up iceberg, <laughs> seems to be the hot topic yeah. there. Do you have a point of view on how that, you, mean, you, met, you just mentioned some real benefits. You don't have to go to your SecOps team. You know, it's not another procurement hassle. It, 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 well, the, well, well, the idea of open table formats is alluring. It's going to open up that can of worms further. Now Snowflake's trying to solve that with, with Horizon. Do you have a point of view on how that plays out? How do you think about that? I mean, I think the, uh, I, I sort of live with the principle, if it's possible, it's going to be done, right? And I think uh, if I were to interpret Sridhar, uh, he knows these things are possible. So the question isn't do it the snowflake way, it's that customers ultimately get to choose. Mm -hmm. So if we offer them methods uh, and we reduce the friction for them to do these things, you know, they're going to be loyal to us as, as uh, suppliers. So I think uh, Iceberg's just another way of thinking about a price performance match uh, for a certain type of data that complements the core warehouse function that complements Snowpark, and I'd expect that we're going to continue to see these sorts of innovations over time. Uh, Snowpark will, and uh, Snowflake in general will just do a great job orchestrating them. I think, I think that's a good way to frame it. It's a good zoom out, Mike. And that really is the, the big picture here. We like to sometimes drill into the weeds. But, um, but, but at the same time, it opens up new opportunities. Right, so it's, a, it's, it's in a way, a, you, I didn't believe it at first, but I actually think it could be a TAM expansion opportunity. Right? For certain it is. You know, one of the biggest areas specifically is around the combination of unstructured and structured data. Uh, the warehouse has obviously been built on numbers. Uh, right. LLMs are built on words. Uh, you know, the question for a lot of companies is, uh, how do I take all of this hidden knowledge that's sitting inside SharePoint and myriad other systems, how do I, data that I've been okay with but could be better, how do I bring those two things together? All these innovations are really just adding up toward, uh, can, these, can this be more than the sum of the parts? And I think the underlying technology is critical. If we can bring in, as I like to say, the average user who has a unique perspective on their job, on their customers, can we bring in that user, their insights, their data, make them more empowered, that's when companies become more productive, 
That's when employees will be happier. You know, this is where the magic happens. I'm so, really interested in this idea though that that is what is going, that's the magic sauce to make employees happier, is that they will become more productive and have this, and have this productivity twin helping them along the way. Absolutely, you know, one of the things that Sigma brought as an innovation uh, to this ecosystem uh, was the ability to add data into Snowflake as an average person. Uh, it's, you know, in the, in the history of BI, you basically just read dashboards. In Sigma, you can add data to the system. So if you're sitting in the inventory team, you may know that there is one less item on the shelf than the system thought. But before, the system prevailed. Now I can correct it. You know, you're just adding that last uh, final frontier, if you will, of enterprise knowledge, which ironically is the employee. You know, and that's where we're spending the vast Ironically, majority of our Ironically, Mike, come on. I know, the average <laughs> person matters. We were singing the song of average people <laughs> earlier, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now that we can give them health care and payroll, you know, they're even happier. <laughs> we're done, oh. we're done. Last question, if I may. So Denise Pearson was on earlier. She said we're, we're back here for the next couple of years, at least. What do you want to say in 20, what do you want to be able to say in 2025 that you can't say today, Mike, and then you bring us home, Brad? <laughs> Things I want to say in 2025, aside so you from can't, that you can't say today. That Sigma's a public company. <laughs> oh, that's, that's bold. Oh, yeah, All there right. you go. No, uh, I love it. <laughs> no, and we'll and do, you're we, retired. We'll come down and ring the bell. <laughs> there we go, we'll just stick with that one. We were talking about the nicey floor good. before, so now we're going to have a reason to meet up down there in, right. your new, in your new corner. There you, there you go. I would love to be able to say that we finally retired our old system and people are smiling every day when they, when they come and, and, and you know, need to get insights into their data through our, you know, through our system. I, I can't wait for that. Making HR painless, that's, yes. that would be, that's, a, that's a big challenge, but if you can do it, then yeah, you're going to no, be rich. No kidding, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Thank you both so much for coming Thank you. on theCUBE. Thank you for having us. Great I'm Rebecca you, Knight for Thanks. Dave Vellante. Good Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.